Okay, great. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, uh, my name is Sunny Stolick. Um, Darren, if you could just flip to the next slide for me, thank you. Um, and I'm very excited to be the moderator uh, for today's webinar. I'm a digital strategist at Squiz. And today I will be joined or am joined uh, by Darren Needham Walker from Technology One. And together we will explore how to enhance your customer's digital experience post COVID-19. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. As usual, today's webinar is being recorded and we will send all attendees a link to the recording and slides in the next couple of days. Uh, Darren will be presenting and he'll be taking questions for about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the presentation. So please submit any questions uh, you may have in the QA tab uh, at the bottom uh, of your screen uh, throughout the presentation. And finally, a bit of housekeeping in case you need to uh, use them. The emergency exits are located at the front and the rear of your home and the bathrooms are probably located just outside of your room. Okay, if we go to the next slide. Uh, just a real quick recap on Squiz for those who don't know us. Uh, we help organisations keep pace with changing customer expectations by providing digital products, solutions and services. We have been doing that for over 21 years globally and across a variety of sectors. Uh, our headquarters are located in Australia, but we have offices around the globe and our customers are leading organisations um, in industries such as government, financial services and higher education. So, uh, the landscape we're sitting in is quite unique. Uh, we have experienced um, something that has simultaneously affected us all globally to varying degrees as our professional and personal lives are disrupted by the pandemic. Uh, business is usually simply not an option and across sectors we are seeing organisations facing the very real possibility of collapsing if they don't adapt and evolve. And we're aware that some of the changes that we're experiencing and seeing in the way governments, workers and customers behave are likely going to be here to stay. As many of our learnt behaviours become central to our new normal. Digital adoption is nothing new, but we have seen it significantly, significantly accelerated and broadened as we stay at home, work from home and avoid face to face contact. There is more data being created more than ever at the fastest rate ever, and that data will remain as a key resource uh, beyond the pandemic. And it also became apparent that as the pandemic took hold around the world, clear, accurate, fast information became a key priority for customers. With that information changing rapidly, it's never been more important to keep people up to date. And we have been busy delivering solutions, helping our customers keep their, helping to help their customers. So uh, what have we been doing? Um, we have been um, rapidly, we have been helping our customers to rapidly publish information and uh, send notifications to keep people um, informed. Uh, we have, uh, the pandemic took hold just before the start of the academic year in Australia. So we have been helping uh, large Australian universities connect with students affected by international travel restrictions. Um, we have been helping them uh, gather data from students, uh, as well as broadcast key information, such as advising which units will be able to be studied online and how they will proceed or start their academic um, university experience. We have been um, helping uh, government agencies provide, to provide trusted, accurate and timely information to citizens. Um, so for example, working with the South Australian government um, at a time when there was no central place for latest information about number of COVID cases in South Australia, number of tests, number of people recovered and compliance. Uh, we worked uh, with our customer to create a COVID-19 South Australian dashboard 
And within 48 hours, we integrated multiple data sources and published a dashboard that is easy for um, citizens to understand. And it's also easy for the government to keep updated. And since we launched, the dashboard has been accessed by over 1 million citizens. We have also been um, helping a variety of workforces, workplaces to uh, work from, to enable their workforce to communicate, uh, collaborate and collaborate to um, basically be effective as their uh, way of working has changed. Um, one of those stories is uh, BAPT Care. So an organization providing aged care services in Victoria. And as you all know, aged care services are highly vulnerable uh, during the pandemic. We, uh, they needed a secure way to share communication and update their 3000 employees when they suddenly uh, changed to working from home. Again, within 48 hours, we helped them create a password protected section of their website, which was accessed just by their staff to notify and to notify them of changes as well as um, additional notifications via email and SMS. Working with a bunch of different clients, it's really clear to us that this is a time when we can make a really big difference to customers by creating intuitive digital experiences publishing accurate information and facilitating meaningful interactions. We, we, as well as our customers, have an opportunity to, th to think strategically, anticip anticipating the future customer need and redefining the customer's digital experience beyond COVID-19. And on that note, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Uh, today, I'm joined by Darren Needham Walker, Group Director Marketing for Marketing Communications at Technology One. Working with the teams and talent behind some of the world's most iconic and influential brands, Darren is a focused thought leader whose work has received international recognition for empowering individuals and teams to be their best. Collaboration lives at the heart of Darren's approach as he identifies and informs unique ways to work within the modern multi-generational workforce of today. Thank you, Sonny. I appreciate the intro. And on, on the back of that, um, I hope I live up to the hope, up to the hype behind that. Um, and I think I need to update my, um, my press photo. It's um, maybe a couple of years old now. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. Uh, when given the opportunity by the team at Squiz, It'd be easy to sit around and talk about the technology behind this, but a lot of what I'm going to cater for today in the presentation is the technology. You know, you need to find the partner of choice, and for ours, it is the Squiz team. Um, and as you work and lean into that partnership, I'm going to talk on more the emotional connection that we need to drive through, uh, and some of the considerations and the opportunities that are before us now. Um, before we came online, you know, Cass and Sonny and I were talking, we have never been busier. Uh, Technology One uh, is a leading ASX 150 company here based in Brisbane, Australia. We deliver um, SaaS ERP solutions in several verticals, uh, being education, you know, uh, federal, state and local governments, asset intensive, financials um, and health and community services we have never been busier and my team at the same time have been caught up in this transition as well so a lot of what i put in today has is really current and um top of mind not only just for myself and for my team but also other marketing leaders that i've been in contact with over the COVID period um looking at what we can do so without any furthermore i'm going to jump in and we're going to leave heaps of time at the end for conversation um insights thoughts and hopefully some challenging opinions. Uh, let's, there we go. Who would have thought guys, you know, when you're sitting down having your Christmas lunch, that would be where we are today. I didn't, I was planning a completely different marketing world. My transformation agenda was on plan. Uh, my marketing campaigns were going out to speak a certain narrative. That all changed at the end of January. Um, it was actually at the end, middle of February, when I put a halt on everything we were going to market with. And this is some of the reasons why. In a world, even with what we create here at Tech One, 
uh, at the highest level, and we have our differentiation, uh, but you know, a HR system is a HR system, a finance system is a, H a finance system. Ours, of course, are the best on the planet. All right, um, but what stood us apart was how we interact with our customers. What is that customer experience that we can deliver to make us stand apart from our competitors? For Tech One, there's everything from we, where I am here in Brisbane and Fortitude Valley, the developers on level four, they research it, code it, produce it. Level five, they package it up, put it out and service the implementation. Sales are on level 10 and marketing, we're on level 11. So we own the entire ecosystem. So we, there is no one between us and our customer set. All right, and so at every customer touch point, it is a direct engagement with tech one, which gives unparalleled advantages for us to be closer to the customer, to respond to the needs of them relatively quickly. All right, so how do we stand out now? And when everyone is working from home and people can't come and experience the wonders that we can offer and our similar brands through our um, briefing centers um, and the whiz bang of walking into our hack space or the village green on level four and be inspired with the, what our young grads are talking about, it is through the digital realm that we have the opportunity to transform. It has always been on the forefront for many brands, including Tech One, to embrace the digital realm, uh, to actually lead on the transformation, or to rather be participating in the transformation. But now's the opportunity to transform from the front. Now, the challenge for every company, right? Some, if you're unfortunately in the travel or airline industry, uh, it's been hit harder with less options uh, than others. Uh, but every company uh, has the challenge at the moment. Uh, how do we pivot, innovate, and transform and remain relevant to our audience? And that's no different to us at Tech One. Uh, we have a myriad of customers that are on premises. So you know, our software sits on their service, and some, well, the majority, are actually are now on the cloud with us. But we are actually being demanded by CEOs, CFOs, you know, and even as marketing leaders on how do we lead that transformation and that pivot. Uh, now is not the time to stand still. It's perfectly okay to sit back and slow down because you're not, there is no handbook. This is not written in Kotler's you know, marketing management textbooks. We have not been through this before. Uh, so it is okay to take a breath. Uh, and we've seen very public displays where companies have gone out too quickly uh, with the message and it just didn't land well. It is now the time to take stock of what we have and really understand what our customers need. The big thing here is at the moment, when will normality return? And what's it gonna look like? I was in a meeting this morning, you know, speaking about one of our industries, all right? And like, what is the new normal? This, you know, if you look at research that's been conducted by um, a US research company and it is global, that 48% of people that are now working from home want to remain working at home at least part time. And what does that do for digital buying habits? Right, we're seeing that there's been a dramatic uptake right, on um, social media, no surprise. Right, with 48% of those people working at home are saying that they're using more of their mobile phone and mobile devices to actually log into social media. Um, I must admit, I'm a recent addition to TikTok. Um, I, do, I promise I am gonna delete it this weekend because it is so addictive. Right, but it's changing my behaviors, right? And while we're at home, who's not taking a lunch hour and you know, catching up on a Netflix series? It is changing our viewing and digital behavior and, and consumption of uh, content and where we are consuming it. Uh, people that haven't gamed for ages are now returning back to gaming as we're stuck more in isolation. So this unprecedented working from home is putting strains on everything from the internet connection to relationships. Uh, but most importantly, from where I sit, it's put in a strain on how we would traditionally communicate to our, cons our constituents. Now, with the digital landscaping changing, it's putting a lot more pressure on owned media platforms, like our website, uh, it, 
our LinkedIn channels, that that is where people are going to for content. They're not hanging out in the usual places. So it gives us the opportunity to rebrand, reposition, uh, and reformat the content that we have. And with that, sorry, getting on to the next slide. Um, every CEO is asking, and subsequent boards obviously, are asking and demanding, and I'm getting these questions, what do we do? How do we sustain um, market share? How, or how do I make more market share? Or how do I boost our top line to protect that bottom line to keep our people employed? Uh, is that the right question I ask? Uh, is that the question we need to be asking in this time of uncertainty? And I must say, you know, I don't think it is. Uh, we need to be very careful with how we challenge ourselves through this time. Right, we must be, how do we support our customers now in a meaningful way that is going to be humane right, and relevant to their situation today? Uh, it is remiss of anyone to be able to expect that you know, in a world of turmoil that people are going to spend more money. I can, I can tell you as a marketing leader, I, I have never been inundated with so many calls from agencies and people out of the blue trying to sell me their services. People are trying to find and protect and throw up their revenue line. Right, and I'm trying to actually support our customers. I, I will take you through a little bit of a case study of something we did do and we reached out proactively, not looking for new customers, but how do we support the ones that we have? Uh, and again, that is part of the business continuity plan. So as we reach to master digital, right, and I'm seeing a lot of a lot of data that is going up, and um, Sonny touched on it earlier. There's unprecedented unprecedented amount of uh, data that is being now loaded to the web. Uh, there is more content being uploaded over the last three months uh, than what is rumored to have happened all in the last one year. Uh, there's um, many famous examples over the last three months of where large scale events at the 11th hour have been turned into webinars, not that dissimilar to what we're on now. And that is a massive change for some of these companies. And I'm one of those that is actually pivoting through to a 100% online digital experience. But what do we need to be mindful of as we embrace digital mastery. And that is what our purpose is. There's a lot written about purpose at the moment. You know, it is not your company mission or vision statements. Right? Purpose is why we exist to start with. Uh, it's not the software that I sell. It's not the industries that we service. It is what is it that we get up every day to do? What is that guiding principle that we need to adhere to? That is so deep and thorough that it is that true moral compass for us. Uh, that is the thing that we must embrace and wrap our arms around. It will give us direction and consistency as we lean forward uh, into developing the content that's going to change the digital experience. Uh, we need to work out what is it that we do? What is it that we do really well? For us, it's created amazing software that transforms business and keeps life simple. That is the overarching promise. And how do we deliver on that? How do we make things easier and more accessible? Right? Are we authentically reaching out on delivering on that purpose? Right? And not trying to sell them something, but how can we help them with what they've got? How do we help them make their lives even more simple by realizing the, the value of their investment today? Uh, if you go out and lean out on too much of a self-serving lens, it doesn't come across authentic. Authenticity is one of the key attributes which actually drives your purpose. I often get asked, can you measure the level of authenticity and how has it been received? And yeah, you can. Uh, it clearly, it's by brand valuation, customer engagement, customer communication, uh, and customers actually buy what you're putting out if you come across more authentically. So a couple of things that I, I want to 
land on that I really want everyone to embrace as we go through the evolution of our digital customer experience. All right, don't panic. As I said earlier, take a breath. Reevaluate what is it that we want to say. Is it the right time for me to go out and you know, flog you know, multi-million dollar uh, software solutions now when business models are changed? So therefore, don't be too aggressive with marketing. Don't put the spin on it. All right, try, and it's not try, but you must embrace your humanity. You must embrace your true purpose of your organization which will keep you right on point as you start proliferating more and more digital content, it'll keep it right on point. We have to find ways to make digital more human. I'm in a B2B space where it's very normal for us to do a lot of events, all right? So we can meet you know, and bring our tribes together. That's not gonna happen for a long time yet. How do we drive those experiences so we still maintain the tribe? We are tribal people. We do like that human connection. And um, everyone who's been in ISO for many, many months, I uh, um, know what it's like when the pubs open up. Everyone was the first one racing down there to find there's only 20 seats available. How do you create that human connection? Look at ways to be able to drive that two-way engagement. Be upfront with what's changed. Don't sugarcoat it. All right? The world has changed. It's business unusual. It is what it is, all right? Learn from what you've executed, all right? But also take it one step further, all right? Know your customers and actually know what you think they need and give them that little bit more, all right? It will work if you true, trace true to your purpose. So be upfront, tell them that the world's changed. Things are different. I'm not gonna tell you how to come out of this and be super successful, all right, but what I'm saying is we're in it together, but also surprise them with the delivery and how you have pivoted. How we did this at Tech One, we delivered a campaign out of the gates and we simply called it Together as One. We introduced what you can see on the screen, which we refer to as the gesture, um, a little, about 12 months ago now, and it's actually never, ever connected. As you see, it's put into this, you know, figure eight. Um, that has never happened before. So it was very symbolic for us as a brand. Uh, but what we came out with is, all right, all marketing stopped except for to our existing customers. And we offered them, offered up three, three things. We gave free software away, analytics, uh, to our customer base. Uh, so as people were pivoting and running to operate from home, what are some of the key dashboards that would enable them uh, that they could to run or continue with business continuity plans uh, if they were to apply these dashboards. Uh, many of our customers have already got the analytics, but we designed this bespoke based on what we believe we needed to do when we all got forced to work from home. So we deployed that services. Uh, we put free training seminars out there and made them a lot more accessible, uh, which made me question how far do people have to look to find a training for our solutions on our current website? And you know what? It really raised a couple of eyebrows on how more effective we could be with the rise of the individual to make these services front and center. And the last one was shared knowledge. We have a very, very active community. We're near on 20,000 uh, participants. Uh, we set up some very bespoke industry led because we are we go to market by industry um, allowing the industries to um, to come together oh, sorry um, industry rooms where they could go in and raise their problems that they have the challenges that they're finding through their organization with COVID changing by the hour and actually having some very organic conversations in a in, in a not a moderated but self-moderated environment and we publish this out the uptake was absolutely surprising. Uh, we also then went to our customers that weren't on our SAP platform, that was operating on-prem with an offer that, hey, come across and we're gonna give you a year of SaaS for free. Uh, you've, it, now's the time you've really got to move, come to SaaS where you can actually um, take the friction out of this remote working or working anywhere from. And again, that was taken up by um, a good number of customers across Australia, New Zealand, and the UK.
one of the things that we've got out of this, all right, which made us evaluate our own customer experience today, which also means we have to change, is that our journey was complicated. All right? It was not personal. It was very transactional. And we missed the opportunity to make a genuine connection with our audience at so many touch points. So we need to reinvigorate what our content needs to be. Everyone says content is king. All right? I would say your infrastructure all right, is queen. All right? And which will tell you that you need to have the best content. But if your con content is not easily discoverable, it doesn't resonate because it doesn't connect with your audience, uh, it's the wrong thing to do. It's a, it's a waste of time. Uh, so mass personalization has been around for many years, but all companies, including my own, as it, is at different levels of maturity with adopting personalization. Whether you have the full MarTech stack behind you, or you're in your infancy in this transition, there's many ways to make the content relevant and personalized for your community. But I would, again, uh, ask you to partner with a digital expert, someone like Squiz, to help you with that. All right, from your demand generation, content curation, to the asset repository, your website, um, and content management system behind that, to underpin your digital transformation. I believe that what's been before us now is the single largest opportunity to build trust. We have not seen anything like this. You're as old as I am, maybe Y2K, uh, when the world was going to fall apart and planes fall out of the sky because of the computer system could do it. I don't know if it was a marketing employee at that stage or whatever. But this is a massive opportunity if you do it right. If you look at your customer experience and how you can enhance that digital experience, uh, now's an opportunity for you to really get closer to your customer. We heard early, earlier from Sonny is that there's been a large demand uh, for accurate and timely information. Even here in Queensland, I know I read a lot of the down south newspapers about what is actually happening for COVID. I don't hear what's happening with my state of Queensland. So it's hard to find the information. You go trolling around for it. So don't make your customers look for it. Make it easily discoverable. Make it relevant. Understand through algorithms, AI and ML, to be able to serve up the content based on the repeat visits. Please embrace this opportunity to transform your business, transform the digital experience right, that will benefit your customer, customer and your company to a longer term. It is business unusual. I doubt we'll ever see it's back to where we will have been in the past. I don't think we'll be back to where we, you know, I was celebrating Christmas lunch with my family at a restaurant. I, at that level, things like um, biometric reading with fingerprint readers is, is, was something we had here at the office. We don't use those anymore. How do we transform those engagements? How do we transform and take this opportunity to reset? So understand what your customer's frustrations are. I understand what their expectations of you are now. I, I was asked within the first couple of weeks of COVID, what are you doing now? And my response is delivering on what we do best. And that's supplying the best always on ERP SaaS solution on the planet. We concentrate on doing that. So there's maximum uptime and our customers can focus on everything bloody else right, that was being thrown at them. Right, and deliver on that, deliver on that and put everything we had behind that. Again, slow down, it's okay. Build the plan. This is a great opportunity, but it's going to take you the opportunity to slow down, really, really harness through authenticity what your purpose is. All right, hug onto that purpose to help you build your plans to move forward, which will help you with point four on making digital more human. It does not need to be perfect. We're all used to now doing Zoom calls. 
Uh, we are used to doing video conferences, telephone calls, and so forth. I made a piece that was called Together as One. Uh, you'll be able to find it on our LinkedIn page. And it was a bunch of home using um, mobile phones, taking video of us working from home. And it was just thrown together, you know, and I am not a creative genius in this, but the level of authenticity that we put out there, and how, this is how we're coping at home and having a bit of fun. Right? Um, it was making our digital journey more human. Uh, and less serious. If we combine everything above, understand your customer, slow down, interpret what does that mean, and how does that? How do you have to pivot to ensure that you continue to deliver on authenticity? Uh, and doing that, making it more human, your brand trust is going to grow and solidify your relationship with the consumer. Now's the time for the consumers are wanting something to believe in. Give them that. Give them the ability to believe in your brand, your company, right, through your digital experiences. Now, I think I'm done on that. Um, I'm going to pass back to Sonny. Yes, thank you. That was um, a great presentation. Thanks so much, Dara. Thank you. Um, it's so, I mean, 100% customer first and purpose led and authenticity, everything you're talking about rings so, so true um, and kind of is at the forefront of what we've been thinking about as well. And it's really interesting to um, hear how Technology One has been, how you've been enhancing your digital, you know, your, current, your customer's digital experience. Um, so at Squiz, we have uh, DXP, our digital experience platform, which uh, we use to help our customers enhance their customers' digital experience. And basically, it's a market-leading suite of products uh, that makes delivering omnichannel experiences simple, and it helps build meaningful customer relationships. Um, you can learn more about how we can help you by visiting the URL, squeezes.net forward slash DXP. And uh, without much further ado, let's get into the QA section of our session. Okay. Um, so, firstly, the one I'm really interested about uh, is you've, you've mentioned... Um, uh, some of the, you know, pivots and basically the need the need for pivoting, uh, but also taking a breath and not rushing into things. And um, I'm really curious to hear. Um, I've been observing and have been inspired by, you know, in France. I think it was the perfume uh, houses uh, manufacturing hand sanitizer, and you know, I'm seeing mm. local furniture makers. Uh, coming out with work from home desks and my local gym is selling uh, home gym gear. What are some of the most interesting uh, pivots that you've seen, that you've observed? It, it, just in my local area, you know, um, we some small little restaurants that have never done takeaway yeah. and refused to do it. They've had to quickly adopt a, a, a takeaway, which meant that um, they had to establish a website an e-commerce engine, I uh, um, navigate through that business model with different, I'll, I'll be very um, generous on this one, um, different delivery mechanisms, charging different fees, and very quickly having to work out which ones they need to go with to help support them remaining open. Um, and it was my little Japanese restaurant in Hamilton called Sunny Doll that went from one to the other so rapidly that they evolved Right, um, but and I actually said to them, okay, was cost always number one? And they're like, no, what we had to do is make sure that we looked after our locals. Right, you come here at least once a week, we wanted to make sure that your experience was exactly the same. Uh, for the first about 10 days, right, um, when COVID hit, when we first went into lockdown, it was ring up phone order, you could never get through. Um, and that was not often, so they quickly pivoted, and that was awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what I've also seen uh, um, it, digitally uh, it is how some customers, and this one that really surprised me was the Sofitel um, Viaduct in Auckland. 
right? Um, I we had planned we're going to New Zealand for a weekend. We booked um, a room, um, prepaid, so we got a really good deal. Yeah. Uh, so online, I was be able, to, well, I was able to lodge because they knew that their call centers were overworked. Yeah. They acknowledged that, and then they said, "Look, please log this in if you have your booking reference number." I, within 24 hours, I had a credit on a fully non-refundable accommodation seat uh, at the South Hotel. And that was all, they had not had that inquiry, or sorry, that facility on their website previously. Mm -hmm. They quickly established it, knowing that the other form of customer experience, their call center, was overwhelmed. Yeah. All uh, right, so again, I thought that was a great job done by the South Hotel in Auckland. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I've been really enjoying uh, seeing, especially like the experience side of things, you know, bringing experiences into your home and replicating that as much as you can, everything from yeah, restaurants to even, you know, travel and, and acquiring new skills, like you mentioned with the training and webinars such as this. Yes. Uh, um, okay, uh, can you tell us a little bit around, I've got a question here, how can you achieve personalization ahead of comprehensive MarTech investment? Um, a, a couple of ways, you know, particularly if you want to go um, personalize, like we're in industry and I want to go to education versus LG, a local government, sorry. Um, as we target media, you know, you can obviously target your media to drive into a bespoke page. Uh, which will give you a level of personalization. So I advertise in LG Congress, it comes into an LG page. So you, you get that air of personalization. All right. um, the, that is, anyone can do that today. Yeah. All right. What I would again say is work with your digital partner, Squiz, embrace the DXP platforms all right, that are out there to start capturing that data. All right. It is no longer, um, optional, I believe it is 100% imperative that customers are expecting to see data front and center. They don't want to search for it. And yeah. brands that deliver on that experience are going to trump out in the long run. Yeah. You don't understand it. Don't worry. Neither do I. That's why, you know, it's 1-800-CALL-SQUIZ you know, <laughs> uh, to help you along. Use the experts where you can. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind just flipping to the next slide, please? Oh, of course. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that is a key message that, you know, uh, if you haven't started personalizing, if you haven't started using data, you're not alone, <laughs> you know, no. it's not, uh, yes, you should, but it's also, you're not the only one. We're all in this together and there are simple ways to really make a difference, but it does have to be authentic. You have to understand your customers, understand what's going to be the most meaningful um, uh, way to use that data for them. Yes. and to make their life easier and simpler and more convenient. And, and again, it goes back to the authenticity. You know, yes, of course, data is going to make it easy for you to sell and segment your data, uh, what, you know, what channels are performing to get you the best outcome you're looking for based yep. on your customer response. But it's, it's not just the f marketing waterfall. It's the actual engagement at every level. Right? Yep. Um, I've been in B2C businesses, B2B, obviously B2B now. Everyone buys based on engagement and, and that in, emotional connection they're building throughout the journey. Right? And the digital experience can give you that. Right? And the mass personalization that you can attribute by having the right DXP layer right, will only further enhance your ability to stand out amongst the competition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what are some of the criteria that you look for in a digital partner? Um, and it's re really hard. Uh, and I think it's becoming more and more prevalent now. And I, um, and I think our customers ask this of us as well, is um, honesty and transparency. Yeah. Right? Um, I was speaking to a bunch of marketing grads earlier in the week. And... So when I started, it, it was easy. There was one form or two forms of advertising, TV and radio. Uh, and if you, you know, that was it. Now, I, there's no way I can stay across at all. Uh, neither can my department. So having a partner that's prepared to take the brief, but also challenging. Uh, and it's that level of mutual respect uh, and understand that they need to help you map out. I'm going to use an analogy. We call it the clothesline here. 
Yeah. But I know where I, you know, and the, the team at Squiz know where I want to be in a period of time in the future. And there's small steps. This transformation can happen overnight and can take 12 months, two years, three years. But it has to be a true two-way partnership. It is not client and supplier. And that is what the key attribute I love is some, if someone can ring me and go, you know what, I think you're, you're full of BS. This is really what you need. I value that more than someone who just says yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So do we. We, we love, um, I, I believe in that. I think that when you go through something difficult with someone, uh, you come out on the end, it's such a stronger relationship if you stick together and you kind of, you know, have that creative tension and you actually come out with a better outcome than just kind of going, yes, 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 smoothly, tick, tick, tick. Um, yeah. There was something along the way that you held back, you know, and you could have actually really made all the difference. Agreed. And Sonia, on that, it's really interesting because I know as we came into this and there was functionality within the Squiz platform that we have currently, as we're moving to a new website in, in coming weeks. Um, but there was inherent functionality, which we weren't using. Yeah. Uh, by speaking to our partner, we were able to get there. Uh, because again, capitalizing on having relevant current content for your customers today Right, is so important because what you said, Tony, is we're all collectively going through this. The yeah. world is going through this as we speak. I, and if we can form a connection base, we help them that little bit, whether it's making the training more accessible, making um, research papers, blah, 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 more accessible and putting it out there in a genuine, authentic way. I go, you know what? When the shit hit the fan, excuse me, uh, they were there. I, you know, if you look at, you know, I look at my own personal life, my friends that have been in my life have, have all been around for significant, significant moments in our life. Uh, and that has built the trust that's maintained the friendship. And the same thing, that emotional connection can happen through what we're going through with COVID now, if we pay attention to the digital experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got a question. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Long time no speak. Um, in the current economic climate, do you recommend a discounting strategy to try and land clients because some money is better than no money or should you do something else? You know, that's a, that's a hard question. And then, you know, Cindy, please call me. Um, I think um, <laughs> it's really hard. A lot of businesses are doing it tough, really tough. Um, I would, if you look at price discounting, and I go back to my my days at HP, uh, we would always say if you discount, it's really hard to call that money back ever. Yeah. You maybe sit in a new industry bench line, uh, and there's always going to be someone out there that if there's an offering similar to yours, that may be able to go deeper. Yeah. Uh, and it starts a war that no one ever wants to get into. Um, I would look at what value add services you can bring to the table. Yeah. I uh, so without knowing what business you're in. Um, for, for example, for us, rather than discounting software, can I give training courses, consulting hours, or something to enhance the overall bundle, yeah. uh, or extended payment terms? Exactly. I find it as a as a consumer, uh, I've been you know grappling with this in all aspects of our life. There's so much, um, so many things that are now available for free in our homes, you know. Um, and my gym, when, when it went to a payment system, but it was purely online, I thought, should I just Google it on YouTube? I mean, surely someone's doing this class for free. And just comparing, you know, paying for a class versus, and I realized the money is actually, it's worth it for me to be accountable and to dial into a Zoom meeting and do the class with the other participants in the class with the person yeah. I'm used to. Um, and that was my decision, you know, that I wanted to, but I think we are going to see more and more uh, customer behavior where they can try something for free and see if it works for them, if it's good enough, or they will, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so almost like little trials or teasers or ways to kind of still convert rather than just give away. Cause you're right. It's very hard to kind of go from a free product to then all of a sudden back to subscription. <laughs> yeah. But you, um, a, a great example, and again, you know, um, of someone that leverages, uh, a mate of mine has a psychological a psychology practice yep. in Melbourne. Yep. Uh, um, and 
when everyone went into ISO, uh, and he basically looks after men because apparently we need it more. Um, but his practice, and he was like, all right, so he had time on his hands, and you know, he was doing some virtual you know, everyone, uh, uh, telephone calls. He actually did a webinar series, a value webinar series on how to manage through isolation. And it was fantastic. All right, what it also did is build a groundswell for when things get back to normal. All right, so the value add, and yes, he may have got one or two customers, well, clients off the back of that to do virtual um, sessions with him, uh, but there was the value add, so he didn't have to discount. Yeah. Another way to look at value add. Hopefully that helps, Cindy. Exactly, yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and, and it's also that beautiful thing of actually using, you know, you, you're, you're giving a taste rather than using marketing as kind of talking about your product. Yes giving a taste of your product and finding different uh, delivery methods. It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think we're getting close to time uh, and I appreciate that even though it's, you know, we're all meant to be at home with all this extra time on our hands, life is still incredibly busy. Uh, so I'd like to thank you everyone for attending and for asking questions and thank you, Darren, for the fantastic presentation. Thank you, Sonny. Uh, please look out for the recording, uh, which we'll email through to you in the next couple of days. And thanks again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. All right. See you on LinkedIn, everyone.